Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. Welcome again to another edition of Think Tech, where we are here today, obviously, to go into another episode of our Tourism 101. Today, I'm very, very happy to bring to you a presentation, I should say, part of a presentation that we at the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association heard at our annual meeting, and that is the importance of our Native Hawaiian culture and how it relates to our hospitality industry. That's what Hawaii has been known for through the years, but it's also something that we cannot afford to take for granted. And here with me this today are two of our three guests that we had there. One, of course, was Robert Casimero, uh, and then two Kumahula, outstanding Kumahula in our community, have done a wonderful job through the years, and they have an exciting project, too, that we'll talk about in the second part of our show. We have here Vicky Ho Takamine. Aloha. And Michael Pilipang. Aloha. Now, both of you are, are noted throughout our community. Everybody talks about the importance of hula halau, the importance of our Native Hawaiian culture. Whenever that subject comes up, inevitably, your names always come up here. So, Vicki, tell us a little bit about your passion uh, for the Native Hawaiian culture. You've been very active, not just in being a kumuhula, but you've also taken up several causes uh, and have really brought that out uh, so that many of us can appreciate the importance of our culture. Well, I, I, my passion for hula started with my mother, Kalei Holt. Uh, she danced for many years with the Alama sisters, and I used to watch her. Uh, for those of you old people, you know the Lucky Luck TV show. Oh, yeah. We used to sit around the black and white, no more color, black and white TV, television, watching my mother on TV performing with the Alama sisters. Um, and I always wanted to dance hula, and she just said, no, you're too young, you're going to quit after one year. I was like, no, but I really would. So when I was 12 and my sister was 10, my sister Charlene, she sent us to my Kiayu Lake. And she was my first kumu, uh, my only kumu. I studied with her for many, many years until I uniki as a kumu hula. But it was Auntie Mikey that got me started in the tourism business. She gave me my first job at the old Queen Surf Luau show with um, the MC was Kaupena Wong, the performers were Lena Ala Haile, um, Moke Ali was a musician. So I got my feet wet um, there in the Queen Surf Luau show. And she also sent me when I was still in high school to, um, to dance for Uncle Bill Ali Ilo Lincoln. Um, greeting all the boats that arrived, the Matson, the Lurleen, and then greeting all the airplanes with um, Auntie Loyal Garner. Talk about your hula I mean, hala. not Auntie, her mother, Loyal Garner's mother, Auntie Alice Kiavikani Garner. Talk about your hula halau, because uh, you've certainly you've taken your halau all around the world uh, and certainly are very busy here at home. I, I know uh, lots of festivals, lots of events uh, where you're involved with. Yeah, so I studied with Auntie Mikey until 1975 when. I was fortunate to uniki, graduate through the rituals of hula as a kumu hula, and I opened my halal in 1977, two years later. Um, and so we're celebrating 41 years of teaching hula. Uh, over this those started years. when you were two then. Yeah, no, you know, I'm <laughs> just getting up there in those years, yeah, all of us are. But it's been a really good life for me. You know, I was able to work in Waikiki with uh, people like Zulu, Iva Kinimaka, Melvin Lead. Um, and then I was, I was running my halal, so teaching them uh, the skills of hula and um, teaching them as much as I could about it. And we just had our uh, couple of uniki. I had two uniki, and I uniki my first two kumu hula in 2007. And in 2017, after 40 years of hula, I had another graduation. So the perpetuation of the halal, we performed in, in many different places in Japan. Uh, Naturally, there's a lot of uh, interest in Japan, Absolutely. and I ran a luau show. I ran Paradise Cove luau show, in fact, started Paradise Cove luau show and ran it, but then also started another uh, luau type show in Ibusuki, ran that for about four years, and um, performed in La Mama Theater in New York City with my friends, Michael and Robert well, Casimero. Speaking yeah. of Michael Pili, um, I've heard you speak many times very fondly of uh, Andy Mikey Ayuli. Why don't you talk about how you developed your passion? I started hula when I was in grade school. I went to Marino grade school, and there was a hula person that came in. She was a student of Auntie Mikey. She was one of Auntie Mikey's gracious ladies, and she was also one of the women from Auntie Mikey's first Uniki class. So Kealoha Wong was teaching classes, and 
uh, I was in a middle school, seventh and eighth grade. After that, she said, you know, you should just go to Mikey. You know, she's down the street on Kalakaua Avenue from Marino School, so just go there. But I had transferred to St. Louis, and then eventually I ended up with Auntie Mikey. Um, by the time I got to Auntie Mikey, she was in Waikiki, at the Waikiki Shopping Plaza, on the fifth floor, where she had created this amazing cultural center. It had five rooms, a showroom that fit 300 people. Um, people came in during the day. It was a living museum. Uh, there was a, a, a library, a kahiko room where we just learned kahiko. There was a monarchy room where we learned all the things about our alis, a music room, and then an awana room where we learned hula awana. Uh, gift shops, and and it was a learning center for me. It wasn't just a, uh, I learned everything about hula there. I learned everything about the tourism, tourist, um, tourism where we had to bring people upstairs. We had to explain to them what all these cultures were all about. Um, so Auntie Mikey's created just this wonderful um, whole scenario for us to learn. You know, it wasn't just coming to halal to a class. It was a living, breathing place. We, we survived about a year and a half there before um, the cost was too much for her, um, and we had to move out of there. But it didn't just create a way of dance. It created a, a place of learning and sharing. We became family. Um, Uncle K, her husband, became my Hanai father. Um, you know, we, we became this family that, that nurtured not just your hula, but who you are as an individual. Right. Why don't you tell us about the fact that I know you have two hula halal, one basically here at Prince Adawal, and then, of course, Hawaii Island. Talk about that. Well, I graduated as a Olapa in 1979 from Antimaiki. I went away to college, came back home, um, and in the 85, I unikied again as a kumuhula. Um, Antimaiki had passed away in 84, so May Kamamalu Klein, who was Antimaiki's kokua at that time, Took, us, oh, took me over, and I finished as an Ola, uh, Kumuhula. I moved to the Big Island thinking, well, um, you know, I can start something new. I didn't have to work in a hotel. I didn't have to work in a restaurant, which my family did in Waikiki. And I thought, oh, I didn't have to do this. Well, by the time I got to the Big Island, I ended up doing that, working in the hotels, uh, which was fine. Um, I started the Halal, and I had met some wonderful people there in, in the Halal. I was quite young. I was 22. Um, I started the Halal. I, it was not really heard of, uh, but people trusted me, and that was the best part. They trusted me. Um, it allowed me to grow. I, I met a woman named Virginia Faf, who was the manager of the Kahilu Theater, and she came up with the idea of, um, gave me an option. Do you want to do competitions, or do you want to do performances on the road? And we took the road trip, um, and we performed somewhere between six to eight weeks a year traveling throughout the U USA, uh, Canada, uh, East Coast, West Coast, at universities and colleges, creating a really strong um, opportunity to present hula, to present what we have in Hawaii. Um, I was also very fortunate, like I said, I worked in the hotels, and every place I went, um, they supported my hula in my life. You know, the Mauna Lani, the, um, the Hyde was a big one that supported me. Hey, speaking mm -hmm. of hotels, then, let's, let's talk about some of the themes that you folks uh, had addressed at our general membership meeting. And what do we in the hospitality industry need to do better or do more of in terms of making sure that we perpetuate and preserve the native Hawaiian culture so that when people come here, they have an authentic experience? I think one of the major things that we need to do is if you want an authentic ex experience, you need to hire Hawaiians or people that are cultural practitioners. Having other people talk about our culture doesn't, it doesn't make it authentic. Uh, and actually participating in it. So, you know, some of my favorite locations, I think, are like uh, what, what John uh, White is, uh, John Morgan is doing out at Kualoa Ranch. You know, he's got a cultural specialist that creates programs, not just for the tourists, but for his employees. So everybody takes language classes so they learn how to pronounce the Hawaiian words correctly. So when you say it's not Kalakawa, you know, it's Kalakawa. Um, and you can share those experiences with them. Or having a Hawaiian language introduction to a Hawaiian language class for your guests when they come in. Have a location where you have somebody that's actually teaching them how to pronounce the place names that they're going to, what are the street names that they're going to have to drive along? Or what are, what are the place names that they're going to see? Waimea. So they know how to correctly pronounce those 
the, the words that they're going to be visiting. I think that's one way to really integrate the, the language into your hotel. Um, and if you have rooms in your hotel or locations in your hotel that are named Paua Kalani, how do you say Paua Kalani? So those kinds of uh, pronounce, pronunciation um, would be very helpful and I think of interest to our visitors. Now, Billy, you were uh, the director of the Mayor's Office of Culture and Arts under a certain mayor. Yes. Uh, so I want you to talk about your perspective with respect to the community. What can we do, whether it's in our schools, uh, whether it's in our everyday activities, to ensure that you know, the Hawaiian culture is alive and well here in Hawaii? You know, I think we're very lucky that we're living in a time today. You know, there was a time where the culture was, we we're losing some of the culture. You know, we're almost like three generations, generations away from there where our Hawaiian, young Hawaiians are learning the language, they're learning their culture. I think that we need to bridge between the community and some of the uh, industry, hotel industry, the sense that it is a living culture. It is a daily living culture. We have poi pounders that are still making pa'i ai. We have kapa makers that are still making kapa. These are not prehistoric cultural activities. These are modern day activities, and it's a living, breathing culture. And you know, it, 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 in, in the community, and it's not just our Hawaii, our Hawaiians, we have many in our, in, sitting in the city, city's office. I had to look at all the different ethnic cultures that we have here. And in Hawaii, we have a diverse community, but we have a community that comes together. You know, we borrow and we trade to create things better. You know, we have our lomi salmon. It was not very Hawaiian, right? We have a, our... But our, it's a staple in It's a our staple luau. now. Yes. And same thing with oh, our long rice. For that same with our long rice. Yeah. From Australia. You know, right, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we have all these things that we've merged together. Hawaiians, Chinese people, they have their manapuana. Sorry, only in Hawaii you have manapua. Uh, chicken long rice. Chicken long rice. Okay. Yeah. It's a staple at the luau, <laughs> right? And but so, I, would, I wanted to go back because what you said is that we're demonstrating. When it's not just demonstration. We're poi pounding for eat. Yes. You know, it's like we're it is living. A daily it's, it's a it's a living culture. Yeah, it's a living culture. So we're not just poi pounding for demonstration. We're poi pounding for consumption. Vicky, you also mentioned that uh, the Kanapali Beach Hotel over in Maui. I love uh, that hotel. General Manager Mike White was mm -hmm. also the former chair of the Maui County Council. Yes. Talk about what you admire, what they're doing there. You know, so again, Mike White has hired a Hawaiian cultural specialist that greets all of their guests when they come into the to their hotel. They all get a kukui nut lei, and they get a brown kukui nut lei or a black one, and that's their first visit. When they come back again, their front desk will swap out that kukui nut for a white one. So when you see guests that are walking around with four, five, six, eight kukui, white kukui nut lace, they bring it back. This is a big thing for them. It, it builds uh, loyalty, it builds, you know, pride. But they come back and they're, uh, they're very proud to wear their kukui nut lei. They have five or six that tells them that they've been there seven times because they have Six. I said, oh, you've been here six times. They said, no, I've been here seven. The first one was a brown lay. So it's the number of times they visited. They, so those kinds of things. And they do a makahiki every year, an annual makahiki, where their entire board, uh, the, all of the departments, get together and create something for makahiki. We're having a lively discussion here with Vicky Ho Takamine and Michael Pili Pang on the importance of our native Hawaiian culture. Uh, and coming up next, after we take a pause for the cause, is a wonderful festival that's coming to our shores here in the year 2020. It's the 13th annual Festival Pacific, a fest, a fest festival of arts and culture of the Pacific. And Vicky Ho Takamine is the driving force behind it. She's recruited folks like Michael Pili Pang to assist in this effort, Robert Casimero. She's gonna tell us all about that and tell, also say how we can get involved as a community to make this what is considered the Olympics of culture and arts a hit of smashing success. We'll be right back. え、各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています。日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲストを招きしてお届けする番組です。
こんにちはハワイ各週の月曜日2時からぜひ皆さん見てくださいホストの国瀬ゆかりでしたアロハ I'm Jay Fidel ThinkTech ThinkTech loves energy I'm the host of Mina Marco and me which is Mina Morita former chair of the PUC former legislator and、uh, Energy Dynamics a consulting organization in energy Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition here of our Tourism 101. And today it's all about the native Hawaiian culture. And we're going to focus our attention now on a wonderful festival that's coming to Hawaii in 2020, largely based on Vicky Ho Takamine. And Michael Pili Pang's lobbying efforts to bring it here. Talk about what it took to bring a festival of this magnitude here to Hawaii.、Uh, Michael and I have been working on this for many, many years. In fact, in 2004,、uh, for the Palau Festival, Michael and I drafted up a proposal to host the festival here in Hawaii. Michael participated in 1980. 1980. He was just a baby. It'll be 40 years in 2020 since the last festival. So, well, you know, for our viewers here, talk about、uh, what this festival is all about. I described it as the Olympics of the Festival of Pacific Culture and Arts in the Pacific, but talk a little bit more about that. Who comes? Where are these、uh, countries that are participating? The, the festival、uh, hosts 28 nations, including Taiwan. Uh, from all, all throughout the Pacific. They bring the best of their culture with them. It's not just performances. It is,、uh, today it is literary, it is poetry, it is film, it is fashion. It's everything that their living culture, which we just discussed in the last section,、uh, is all about. And they bring it here and they show off the very best. Some of them actually have competitions、uh, as to who will be coming and representing their island nation. And so it, it brings in、um, people with them that follow them throughout the years. Like I said, I went in 1980, and I speak with some of the professors at university that said, Oh, we, we have pictures of you in 1980 because we were there、yeah. taking photos you know, at that time. So we have a lot of people that follow this festival、um, as academics, but now it's becoming bigger as a very cultural base. Uh, uh, Opportunity for people、yeah, to see. Tourism It's cultural huge, tourism. Huge, cultural yes, tourism. It's、right. a huge cultural tourism、right. event. So,、right. Michael went in 80. I went, it was supposed to be in 84, and New Caledonia was because of,、um, they transferred it in 85、mm-hmm. in, in French、uh, Polynesia. So, I went to Tahiti in 85, and then we went back in 2004 to submit the bid to host. But 28 island nations bring Their best so that's Samoa,、um, Tonga, Fiji, Fiji Aotearoa. Yes, every、Guam. nation. Micronesia, Polynesia, all of them are、yes. represented very well. So the three regions all rotate to host. New Caledonia, you've got Rapa Nui coming, you've got all of. You look at that map of Oceania, and there's representation from all of the Pacific regions in Oceania. So, Vicki, as the executive director, why don't you walk us through.、Uh, So yeah, that,、uh, so we are going to start. You know, well, I think the economic benefits, what do we want to say, you know, because this is a tourism event, we know that there will be many, many tourists that are going to come. I know that、um, we can t- look at that first slide. Yes, for let's bring our, up the slide. Yeah, so we'll host、um, Hawaii, we'll host from June 10th through the 20th in 2020. We expect to host most of the delegates. In the、uh, dorms at the University of Hawaii, and then, but the, so to give room for the visitors, because we know in Guam.、Um, That's where the last festival was. Yeah,、out. and we can switch. I don't know if they can, yeah. So Guam invested $8.5 million into for,、uh, FestPAC 2016. But the economic visit,、uh, benefits for that, there was a 19% increase in the visitor arrivals, 40,000 visitor nights, $125 million. $590,710 direct and indirect and induced impact to Guam. This is just on Guam. Just on Guam. And supported 1,500 jobs.、Okay. So、um, we、slide. know、yeah. that we can, the community benefits for Guam. They created a Chamorro village. That the, the festival, one of the requirements is that we, we create a village. The festival village was turned into a Chamorro village that is now sharing cultural arts. For visitors to Guam.、Uh, 
um, they renovated their Paseo Stadium where they had the opening and the closing ceremonies and they built a museum for Guam because they didn't have Where it. are we thinking of doing our opening ceremonies? So our opening ceremonies, I would love to have it at Iolani Palace and I think if Ooh. we go to the next slide we'll kind of talk about what are, and we'll just keep scrolling. Oh, I know what culture that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought this is such a wonderful sharing of Samoan culture. Um, they bring, they bring their best. So, um, Next slide. And this is Rapa Nui. Okay. And we'll go on. Next. So the festival theme is Etui Tahoe Uli. It takes, it's from a chant. Uh, that was shared with all of us. It says, take hold of the steering paddle and steer your own course. Nice. Next. FESPAC was uh, organized to stem the erosion of traditional cultural practices and to establish deeper understanding and friendships between the countries. So we were finding that much of our traditional culture, because all of our countries had been, all of our island nations had been colonized by others in Western Europe as well as the United States, we were losing our cultural practices. So this was uh, an attempt to revive and, and to stem that erosion of traditional cultural practices. Next. Um, and we can go, go uh, this was, the first festival was held in Suva, Fiji in 1972. So we'll open with the arrival of the canoes. Um, you know, Hokulea has gone all over the world to share the uh, Polynesian navigating, and we're inviting those that have created navigating canoes to come. Um, so the, uh, the arrivals will be at Ala Moana Magic Island on June 10th, 2020, um, and followed by a tribute at Iolani Palace. Thursday 11th, our opening ceremonies will be on the grounds of Iolani Palace. If our monarchy was still here, where would we be hosting them? Where would, be, would we welcome dignitaries? We would welcome them at our palace. So we felt that this was the most appropriate place to, to hold our opening ceremonies. Next. Um, lay draping at Kamehameha Statue and the opening of the Festival Village. We're hoping that we can partner with the city to use Kaka'ako Makai Parks as a, a festival village area to create opportunities, you know, for us to share. Every nation that participates will have a hale, some kind of, um, whether it's, depending on how much money we all raise together, okay, whether it's a hale pili, which is my first preference, or a tent, but we're, look, we're, we're trying to get the community to come in and help us build Halipili. We'll teach you how. We'll have, you can help us gather. Okay. Thanks. Um, and then the, one of our, our most favorite events, the Kamehameha Day uh, celebration, happens on Saturday, nice. June 13th. So you're combining both. Combining. Uh, yes. So <laughs> this is a tradition that was started in the kingdom by Kamehameha V, Prince Lot who we celebrate every year in June. And so we tailored our festival events to come and celebrate with around those activities. So we don't have to create that, but I thought being part of the FESPAC Parade of Nations, being part of Kamehameha Day, really brings back that celebration of the kingdom times, of the times during Kamehameha V. Um, ecumenical services, can you imagine every country singing a hymn in their own language? What a wonderful choral festival that would be, and, and a part of the ecumenical services. Our venues will be all around Oahu, Ala Moana, Bishop Museum, the Kaka'ako Parks Estate Art Museum, the Convention Center, the Honolulu Museum of Art, um, Waikiki Shell, next. The Kapi'olani Park Bandstand, Windward Community College, and we're so hoping that we can get some of our neighbor um, uh, islanders involved. So getting some of our delegation over to the neighbor islands. You want to share about our special events? We have some great events scheduled. Yes. And these are unique to just Hawaii, which is we, we do our wearable art show. Uh, our Mamo Art Show has been a, a tradition for the last 10 years here, and we're going to put this as part of this fest pack. Um, we came up with an idea of what can we do with all the different nations and children and participating with community. We thought traditional kite flying. We'll get people to learn how to do kites, and then we're going to go to Kaka'ako Park and let everybody go fly a kite. <laughs> literally. Yeah, literally. literally yeah. You know, and again, that choral singing in Kauai Church would be uh, wonderful. 
Um, our Youth Ambassador Program is something that's unique also for this particular festival. We want our, our kids to be our host. We want them to be with every delegate group, uh, uh, working with them, speaking with them, sharing what Hawaii is all about. Uh, so we'll be training those kids on that. Um, our Pacific Island Queen pageant is the idea that Vicky came up with, that many times we have people who are that travel with the group, they are the hairdressers, they are the makeup artists, they are the people who make everything so beautiful. But they never get a chance to be on stage. This is their opportunity to be a part of it. And of course, the culinary, I mean, all Pacific Islands is all about food. Let's do a cook-off with the umu, the imu. Um, let's see how other uh, cousins cook. And let's just have a great time with this one. So if someone is listening and they want to get involved, uh, give us some information on that. Yeah, so um, we, you can contact us through our website, um, festpack-hawaii2020.org. Volunteer for, um, for helping. We need lots of volunteers. You, you can figure out how many people. And we are hosting 3,000 delegates from 28 countries. We expect 100,000 people, visitors, will be coming. We will have events and activities throughout the island of Oahu, and hopefully we can get some of them to the neighbor islands. So we're going to need a lot of volunteers every single day. We want to teach people how to be responsible and sustainable. So one of our, our key projects is how to take care of the trash that 100,000 people are going to give, you know, bring. Recycle. I'm going to need people to help and teach people how to recycle. And uh, a special nod to Kisan Joe, the, the oh, head of the Prince Hotel, who so heard your presentation. So, yes. And then he hosted uh, a welcoming reception. Yes. Uh, many of our leaders were there. Uh, I attended. Uh, Nainoa Thompson was there. Many of our legislators who yes. support you're going to need for funding for this. Right. So, Mufi, thank you so much for, for allowing us to present to the Hawaii Lodging Tourism Gathering um, a, few, a few weeks ago. And we presented about FESPAC before he left, before I left. Kisan Joe walked up to me and said, how can I help? I want to host a delegation. I was like, yes, that's what we need, somebody that's going to be a partner with us. Right. So we hosted our FESPAC launch party at the Prince Waikiki. It was a wonderful Great party. Event. It was thank you so much to Kisan Joe and the Prince mm -hmm. Waikiki well, staff. Well, I want to thank both of you for being here and uh, to sharing with us this wonderful festival. You're going to hear more about it as we delve into 2019. It's coming in 2020. It's just around the corner. Uh, and once again, uh, this is a great event. I participated uh, as what the other part uh, is, the, uh, they have the games. They call it the South Pacific Games. And I went as a member of American Samoa. So I saw it from an athletic standpoint. But here's an opportunity to see it from a culture and arts. Thank you again for joining us. This is Mufi Hanneman saying, Mele Kalikimaka.